For a look at the administration's reaction to the bill and what comes next, we are joined by Nancy Ann DeParle, the director of the U.S. Office of Health Reform. Welcome to you. Thank you. Please outline, here. if you would, the PR campaign the White House is going to use to sell this program. Well, I'm not part of the PR campaign, but I can tell you that what happened last night was truly historic, and it restores to American families and businesses a lot more control over their health insurance. They're going to have more choices. Uh, we're going to do things to bring premiums down, and we're going to fill the donut hole for seniors and provide small business tax credits. So it's really a new season in Washington. Now, can you tell us how soon the American public will begin to see some of the changes this bill implemented? Very soon. In fact, the small business tax credits will start to be available to small businesses later this year. Some of the insurance reforms, uh, such as being able to keep your uh, children on your coverage up until they're age 26, some of those will happen very soon. Never, Seniors will start to see the donut hole filled starting uh, probably in the fall. Um, so right. Uh, right around the corner, you'll start to see some benefits. Why did you, some particulars here, gut the single biggest cost control mechanism in the bill? I'm referring, of course, to the Cadillac tax, which was only applied to, to those very high cost plans because of the union, the union's insistence. Well, it was always being applied to high cost plans. Uh, what the president did, though, was uh, make it more equitable and delayed the starting date um, till 2018. And he did that because he wanted to make sure that we give uh, the high cost plans time to adjust because no one wants to be spending $27,000 for their health insurance. That's the kind of plan that this will address. But right now some people are and he wants them to change their behavior. Also how or, or when perhaps does the White House plan to address the so-called doc fix? That of course the cuts to, to Medicare reimbursement that have caused some doctors to stop treating Medicare patients. Well as you know uh, the, the uh, SGR, the Medicare Sustainable Growth Rate, uh, is, is a payment system that's been in effect well before President Obama came to office and it's needed to be fixed and each year Congress just kicks the can down the road. The president's been uh, in favor of a permanent uh, fix to this uh, since his very first budget that he presented last February and he wants to work with the Congress to get that done as soon as possible. I'd also be interested in your response from some of the uh, state's attorneys general. Again, the White House response here to some of these states claims that the bill is unconstitutional because it requires people to subscribe for health insurance. Well, a lot of legal scholars have looked at that and they've all said that uh, there's no question that uh, it's a part of the inherent authority of Congress to, uh, and under the Commerce Clause uh, of the Constitution to say that uh, people uh, need to meet certain requirements and and this requirement to have uh, coverage is one of them so we're not concerned about that from your experience what would you say is the single biggest moment that determined for you passage that this bill was going to get passed oh I, I don't know that there's one moment but I would say it was the the president's uh, courage and tenacity and also the uh, legislative brilliance of our two leaders in Congress uh, uh, Speaker Pelosi and Leader Reid, and I think they, as a team, uh, continued to work, you know, relentlessly to get this done. There wasn't one item or one point that just finally resonated? Well, I think um, the decision by some of the insurance companies in the last month or so to raise rates so precipitously, you know, almost 40 percent in the individual market in California by one company. Um, I think that really resonated with the American people and brought home the idea that, you know, it isn't just an abstraction. When people say the status quo can't continue, if that didn't prove it to you, nothing would. So I think that helped uh, galvanize members of Congress to realize we have to move forward. And when as is the president... As hard as this is, we have to move forward. When will the president sign it? Uh, very soon. I can't nail down a time here with you. <laughs> I, think, I think that my colleague Robert Gibbs will be giving you a time. Okay, well, listen for him then. Thank you so much, Nancy Ann DeParle. Appreciate it. Thank you.